when we talk about Upanishads, they are mantras. And when we talk about expansions, these are karika. Bhais pragyo bivur vishu hyanta pragya sutejasa dhana pragya satha pragya ek eva tidha smritaha. So we have three states. Vishwa. The first Vaishwanara or Vishwa is waking state. It is all pervading. The experience in, the experiencer of external objects. Now when Atman is identified with the mind, the mind that works in the external world, this is Vishwa. It was mentioned. Tejas is the impressions left from the external world. Now identifying with those. It's just like, you know, like you people. Some you, When you work in the office, you identify with the office surrounding. You come back. Now you surround, you identify yourself with the home setup. And you go somewhere to visit. You become a tourist. Now you identify yourself as a tourist. So no one can believe that you are the same person. Just to uh, give you a very simple example, I am not very sure if the example is very good. When I was a younger Brahmachari, younger Brahmachari, now I just joined, I was hardly 20, 21 at the time. We had Srimad Swami Suhitan Ji Maharaj, who is now Vice President of the organization. He was the principal of Ramakrishna Mission Vidyapit, Devgar. And it was so wonderful to see him that he was the principal of that famous school, very strict, very stern person. And once the classes were over, he often used to teach me Gita and later on, I used to take classes for all the Brahmacharians. Now he was a different personality. In the evening, we all used to play volleyball. Now students of uh, the senior most students, they also used to be there and we also used to be there. And Maharaj he also used to be there. Now he was a different person. So he was a principal. He was an Acharya for us. He was also a volleyball player. And making fun in the same way. Same person identifying with three different situations. Those of you who are conversant with the uh, gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, he gives many such examples that there is a Brahmin when he's cooking, he's a cook, and when he goes to uh, act as a priest, he's a priest, the same person, just like that, Atman identifies itself with different states of mind, it's now different. Pragya is that mass of consciousness. Why mass of consciousness? This was discussed earlier. Because there is no more activity. Neither the inputs through the senses and nor the impressions left from that state. So it is one alone that is thus known in the three states. Here begins the conclusions, the corollaries. Gana pragya tatha pragya ek eva trilhasam. It's one, but appears as three different. Here, a very important thing to remember is, very important thing to remember is that idea of I remains constant. When you come out of the dreamless, that is deep sleep, you say that I don't remember a thing. When you dream, later you say, I dream so and so. And when you are in the waking state, you say, I am talking, you are listening. Now, if we were truly this body, or if we were body, mind, ego complex. If truly we were, 
then we would have continued something like that. But in dream state, I remains. But the trappings of the external world does not remain. In the waking, I remains. But the trappings of the dream state, that does not remain, nor of the dreamless. Same in the dreamless. See, the idea of I remains. Now, this is, this is, this is the main thing that Gaurapada is discussing. I remains. But I plus whatever is, that does not. That vanishes. This is to be noted. So what does it imply? Same I. Moving through three states. Freely. Spontaneously. Unhindered. I hope this argument is not very difficult to comprehend. There is no baggage. Absolutely no baggage from one state to other, which means there is that one single thing which is moving freely in all the three states. But if we were body, if we were this mind, then this would not have been possible. Acharya Shankara says, I am that. This memory, this memory keeps moving. Even in dream, you remember that it's you. And once you return from there, you remember, oh, such a wonderful dream. And then you realize that that Atman is actually pure. It has no baggage. You just have to think. And the idea that that I have these three states and actually these are three different realities that is also moved away. Ultimately the reality becomes one. Ultimately everything is unified. And he uses the example of Mahamatsya. In our traditional Sanskrit, particularly when they are discussing philosophy, they use many metaphors. They call it Nyaya. Like. So this is Mahamatsya Nyaya. Mahamatsya Nyaya. They have lots of, and uh, as we proceed, we shall be coming across these Nyaya, these metaphors. They say, there's a huge fish. It keeps moving. It is moving in a river. Sometimes it is going to this bank. Sometimes it is going to that bank. And sometimes it is in the, it is straight in this river. Now, whatever might be happening on this bank or on that bank, that does not affect the fish. Just like that, Atman is moving through these three without ever getting affected with whatever might be happening in these states. It's the same like bird. A bird is flying, going from this tree to that tree. Nothing affects it. So, it is I that moves successively from one state to other. And these are not three different eyes. The same one single eye. This is what Gaurapada says. <laughs>